Here's a diagram of our grid. We want to apply this surface impedance boundary condition to the bottom of the grid. Luckily, we have an electric field along the bottom of our grid that is parallel to the surface of the ground, EX. So we can use this equation, given here, to approximate the string of EX components along all of the i's at k equals zero. For now, I'm writing zero for k because the bottom of the grid corresponds to z equals zero. And we just use k equals one in MATLAB because the indexing has to start with one and not zero. So maybe I'll put a note here, k equals one when you implement it in MATLAB. But to use this equation to solve for the EX fields, we need the tangential magnetic field along the surface of the ground. But because the field components are offset by half a cell here, we don't have a magnetic field along the surface of the ground. So what should we do? The only magnetic field we have in the grid is an HY. So we'll have to use the HY that is a half of a cell above the ground as an approximation for the magnetic field at the surface of the ground. So now we can write EX for the tangential E field, and I'm going to write a subscript here, I plus 0.5, since this is a half a cell from X equals zero, or I equals zero, and comma zero for K. And this is going to be about equal to the characteristic impedance, which we haven't talked about yet, and the HY component at I plus one half as well, but it's going to be at K 0.5. So notice there is no N superscript yet. That is because these electric and magnetic fields are in the frequency domain, not at a particular time step. So next, let's talk about this eta and what we should use for it. The last tangent of the ground was 1200 and the ocean was 74,000. So both are good conductors. So in table 7-1, the impedance of a good conductor is one plus J alpha over sigma. So if we use the expression for alpha for a good conductor, we can plug that in. So we're gonna have eta, it's a function of omega, is one plus J times, I'm gonna plug in for alpha, pi F mu sigma, and put that over sigma. Now we can combine these two sigmas. We have a sigma in the numerator and in the denominator. So I'm gonna write one plus J square root of pi F mu over sigma. In the frequency domain, we typically write equations in terms of omega and not F. So let's uh, convert this expression for eta so that it is in terms of omega. And we're gonna do that using F is equal to omega over two pi. So now we're going to get one plus j square root of omega mu over two sigma. Now if we distribute this square root term, we can see that the impedance of the ground, omega mu over two sigma plus j omega mu over two sigma, has both a, a real and imaginary part, and both parts have equal amplitudes. The real part relates to power loss in the conductor in the same manner as a real valued resistance R of a resistor dissipates power. So this dissipates power. And since the impedance of an inductor is positive, ZL is it J omega L, then the, this imaginary part, which is also positive, is inductance. The impedance of an inductor is J omega L. So in this case, since we are dealing with the impedance at the surface of a material, the surface of the ground or ocean, we will call it a surface impedance. So we can plug in RS, a surface resistance, and a surface inductance. 
So Rs is equal to just this, square root of omega mu over 2 sigma. But Ls, since there's a j, j omega out in front, and up here we only had j, then we need to account for omega. And so that will be mu over 2 omega sigma. Since our source, the source of our electromagnetic wave is a single frequency, it's 10 kilohertz, we can plug in 2 pi times 10 kilohertz here for all the omegas. So now Rs and Ls turn out to just be constants at a single frequency. So now we can plug this expression for eta into our relationship between the tangential electric and magnetic fields along the surface of the ground. So that's shown here. This is eta. Now since FTTD works in the time domain, we need to convert this equation to the time domain. Taking the inverse Fourier transform, j omega here will turn into a time derivative. So now we're going to get e x n, since it's in the time domain now, we have a time step number, i plus 0.5 0 is going to be about equal to rs h y at time step n, i plus 0.5 0, k for k, plus ls, and now we have the partial time derivative of h y at time step n, and i position i plus 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh, and since h y is located at k plus 0.5, I'm going to have a 0.5 there. Now, just as we approximated the partial time derivative in Maxwell's equations using central differencing, we can apply central differencing here to this partial time derivative. So if we do that, then this term is going to be h y n plus 0.5 minus h y at n minus 0.5, and both are at the same location, just above the e x component that we're trying to solve for, divided by delta t. So now, can we just use this expression in our FDTD model? Well, we should notice one more thing. In this expression, we don't have h y at time step n. That's not stored in our computer. In our FTTD grid, only h y's at half integer time steps are stored. But we can use the same approximation that we used earlier when we had a similar problem when modeling a conductive material. That's from FTTD 5 lecture. So for this, we'll approximate this as h y n plus 0.5, the same location, plus h y n minus 0.5, all divided by 2. So we're averaging the two closest h y's that we do have stored and dividing by 2. Now we have an approximation for the EX component, uh, any, any of the EX components along the bottom of the grid at the surface of the ground or the ocean. So what should we do with this? When do we need to use these EXs in our FDTD model? See if you can apply this equation to our model.